So, do you want to work 12 hours a day doing this? Do you want to waste time doing something that does not have to be done? Something that makes you a technician at best? And it is one of the reasons you are paid close to nothing? Well, let me tell you what we are doing wrong and what has to change if we do not want architects to still live in the mid-20th century and be paid like that. If you're an architect, civil engineer or anyone involved in the building process, this is what you know as the standard procedure. In Germany, this is divided into nine phases. You can divide it into two, three, fifty. The point is the same. You start with an idea, with a sketch. This is your design process that has multiple stages. As you progress through those stages, your design becomes more and more detailed. You could say it gets higher in LOD, something known in the game industry since the beginning and something appearing in architecture with BIM, level of detail. Your sketches get from 1 to 1000 to 1 to 100, 1 to 50, 1 to 20 maybe. So you are in your 2D world and once you're ready, you start to model in 3D. And this is usually a very manual and a long process. And the worst of all, it's very iterative. Your models are not fully parametric. So you might model an entire house and then someone decides to change the column grid for 20 centimeters for who knows what reason, some installation maybe. And you basically have to remodel the entire house. So after all the unnecessary iterations that you know and I know from practice can take months and even years for larger projects, at some point your entire model is done. And now we want to make detailed execution planning. We want to draw every single detail one to one if we have to, so that everything is built as we want it to. And we also make whole books, descriptions of walls, materials. We calculate quantities of concrete, bricks, number and type of windows. Why? So that someone can produce all of this and build it in real life. So what do we have? We have a 3D model and we want a 3D structure. And what do we do? We say, no, 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 no. This does not work like this. We need to hire professional translators. I want you to spend months translating all this into hundreds of 2D drawings. I want you to take this model and translate it into volumes of books. And then I want you to give that to people that understand that intermediate language. So they will know how to read that and be able to translate it back into a 3D structure. More or less the same one as you have on your computer. And once we get to the construction site, it goes on for months and years, building expensive formworks, drilling, banging, stressing everyone around them, stopping traffic, polluting the environment, causing injuries and death, until finally they finish the building. This is all bullshit. And I heard all of your arguments, trust me, hundreds of times. And I'm not buying it. I'm not naive, I know how the building industry works. That does not mean it should do that forever. This is how this should work. And everything I'm telling you is implementable. Not tomorrow, not today, but since years ago. Why are we not doing it? Are we stupid, lazy, inertia? Yes, whatever it is, I don't care. This is how it's supposed to be done. And I know that efficiency is not the most important thing in the world. So bear with me, I will address that at the end. Let me first explain to you how we are wasting everyone's time and make people do stupid, repetitive work. First, as an architect, you can sketch as much as you want. It is a very beautiful process. No one can, should, will take that away from you. And nothing can replace that. Until you get to a level where you know what you want from your building and you start to play with plans and tweak them around. Then, the first thing you need to know is that your sketches can be actually transformed immediately into digital shapes. But more importantly, there is no reason for you to make countless drawings and in different scales. But, but here is what you will say. I'm in the process of design, exploration. I have to make different drawings to test my ideas and it is faster to do them in 2D. I cannot remodel the whole house every time I want to move a column or a beam. This is your first mistake because you're thinking in an old way and here is why you're wrong. Your building can be designed completely parametrically. What that means is that once you have your basic idea, you set up a sort of a DNA of your building. At the start, it is very small couple of parameters but then it grows and grows in scale and at any step of the way you can change anything you want and everything else will be changed in a chain reaction. Move a column, change the size of a window or move a doorknob. Everything is interconnected and will update accordingly. So now you design and model parallelly and when you're done with your design you do not need another six months for modeling. No, your model is already there. Now I have to go and design the details manually. No, you don't. In the parametric world, no one limits the LOD. 
We are in a fractal world now. You can zoom out and zoom in as much as you want and define everything parametrically. Every single element in your structure can have a couple of input parameters and generate the output parametrically. And this is what we do on a daily basis. So now you have something that is known as a twin model. You have a 3D model of a building where everything is inside. And I don't think you heard me. Everything is inside. Every screw on every chair in every room is in that model. Aha, uh -huh, you say. I knew something was wrong here. That's impossible. The model of this building would have terabytes and terabytes of data and no computer could load that model. Again, think forward. Two things. First, your model is parametric. That means every chair can be represented with a single point and all those screws are saved as a simple text information and you can generate them in 3D only if you need to, on demand, or to export it and give it to someone who will produce it. Two, ever heard of cloud computing? That is the future and with powerful back-end computing you will be able to open and handle such a model even on your tablet. Okay, so here we are. Now we go through the most ridiculous and redundant part, the translation from 3D to 2D and then back to 3D. No. Sorry, but no. First of all, we can have algorithms that do those 2D drawings automatically. Did this many times, still doing it. And most new BIM software tries to do that. And okay, with the old ways of building, I can admit that that is maybe the easiest way. I can tell you that with augmented reality and tablets on the construction site, you could reinforce and build a concrete wall with only a 3D model. But I know that might be a bit elitistic, but that's why I think we should get rid of the old ways of building altogether. As I said, it destroys the environment, clogs our cities, causes injuries and fatalities, and it is noisy as hell. We have to move toward pre-fabricated architecture. Everything should and could be pre-fabricated and only assembled on site. Simple houses can be assembled in one day. This is in every way a superior way of building, and it can eliminate 2D drawing completely. Tell me, how many hours and days have you wasted drawing like this, trying to make your drawings look nice? And then someone would tell you, can you please make this green, change the font a bit, change the dimensions a bit, make your drawing nicer. For what? Please, who am I trying to impress? Oh, it's for readability. Don't make me laugh. This drawing is completely unnecessary and you're going to hang it on your wall somewhere, maybe? Why does the font matter? Will this dimension be drawn on the wall once the building is done? Are we in the business of painting and graphic design or architecture? And if you're an architect, you know what I'm talking about. People will spend weeks and weeks cleaning up some drawing to make it aesthetically pleasing and readable. No. You have your twin model. The information goes directly to the fabricator. They build entire walls and floors and ceilings with installations integrated based on your 3D model. The steel factory cuts and delivers beams and bolts based on your 3D model and automatically generated CNC files. There is no need for this waste of time. And then you bring the things on site and assemble them in a fraction of the time you need if you're building on site. All the elements are much more precise than if built on site. Errors are minimized, injuries, fatalities minimized, the quality of every element maximized. Now, I'm not a friend of efficiency for the efficiency's sake, for the profit's sake. We have been lied to since the beginning of the industrial revolution that machines will free us from work. For 200 years they have been telling us how machines will do everything instead of us and our work week will shrink until we all only paint and make music. Instead the profit only goes to the top. On the 1st of May we celebrate and we should mourn the day when the demonstrations in Chicago in 1886 resulted in people being killed, all because they wanted an 8-hour working day. If you're an architect today, you damn well know that the average working day is 10 to 12 hours at least. Doing this. For what? For whom? We need to condense this process, not so that we build even faster and that you work even more, but to free you from the repetitive work. To free more time to do the creative part. And how do we stop this from backfiring, from you being exploited even more because now we can build a building 10 times faster? Well, I cannot help you there. You have to appreciate yourself and your time. And if you accept to work for someone 12 hours a day doing something that's redundant, then own it and do not complain. But remember there's an alternative. Join us, try to change the system. Subscribe to hear more, share, stay free. 
if you want to create your own cool plugins like Voronax or any of our other plugins, I can teach you how to do it. And if you go to proarchitect.teachable.com, you will see already some of the courses there, the Rhino Developer C++ course or the Rhino Developer C Sharp course. Uh, you will get small C++ and C Sharp basic courses with them. And in the future, you will get to see a lot of other courses on similar subjects. You can enroll the, in the course. You can see all the explanation here. You have more than 10 or 11 hours of video. The first couple of videos are free where you can check out if you are able to download the software and create your own plugin. And afterwards, there is a lots of lots of uh, videos explaining all the basics of the development for Rhino so that you can create your own plugin.